is Ryan Gordon, and I'm going to give you a little update on what we've been doing with the Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit. So, an ongoing problem that we've been having is with the debug output when going to the uh, console over here. Now, if you've used this before, you're familiar with the test app from a previous example, but if you want to see what's happening with debug stuff and see what kind of output it's doing, it always goes to standard out, which means you have to have a terminal back here, and you have to keep flipping between it to see what's going on. And that's a little annoying. Now, this is even worse if you're not on Mac OS or Linux. If you're on Windows, this output goes out into the vapor somewhere. It, uh, there is no standard output on Windows for the way we're doing this. So this does not work at all for Windows users, and that's unacceptable too. So we've come up with a slightly better solution for this, and we call it the Dragon Ruby console. Oh, I know, I know. We've just made a Quake console. Everyone has done this before, but bear with me here. Um, so as you can see, you just hit the tilde A key, the back tick key. Um, the thing that you've always done in every video game ever to drop a console down and it goes you know back and forth you can pop it in and it fades in really nicely but um but everything that you write to standard output or the engine writes to standard output also goes to this console so if you want to continue debugging using just the standard puts ruby call you can do it and it will show up in this console and you can scroll back and see it and we also of course let you enter text here hello world as we do boop and there it is this input works like a very basic Ruby REPL. If you just want to do like little Ruby one-liners, you can do it. And you can do one-liners that will affect the program because it can touch any variable that's in there. But, um, you know, if you just want to do, you know, it, it'll print out one if you type one because it's just repeating back the return value. You know how it goes. But that means you can do simple Ruby arrays or you can do fancier things like map i times two, and there's your, your fancier array, there you go. Uh, so, you know, this this works more or less the way you would expect it to. Um, you can do a nice little VI thing to quit out of here. But we wanted to show you what this will look like. Let me keep that text editor going there. Uh, for where I feel like this really shines. Now let's add into this thing something that doesn't exist. Let's just take dragon, blah, 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 like that. Save that run that. Now this is here. Now if you saw this in this window before I jumped over here, this is this only checks this when you click the mouse. So let's go ahead and click the mouse here and cause an error. Ruby throws an exception, console comes down. So you can see very clearly immediately when something has gone wrong. So that's good. But okay, so let's get rid of that. But the thing is there's lots of places where you can also have just a syntax error where you've put an extra parentheses or something like I just did here. And in that case, Dragon Ruby will crash immediately, like you'd expect it to. But the nice thing about this is that you can then come in here, fix your problem, and as soon as you save this, boop, console will go away. And the thing just starts running because it knows it, it'll hot load the thing and realize the problem is fixed and get rid of the console because you don't need it anymore. Um, we think that's a really nice feature. Uh, now this console is totally customizable. You can uh, I'm going to just do it in, in, in the console itself right now, but, uh, you know, if you want to do console, you know, background color equals, I don't know, let's make it blue, you know, red, green, blue, alpha, boop, there, you know, it's, so, and you probably aren't going to type that there, but if in your own game you want this to look different, you want to literally have your blue screen of death, you can just customize in your game with one line of code and you can change this logo or the font or the text color and stuff like that. Um, we think this is a much better solution than we've had previously. This is going to be nicer to use. This is going to be much, much better for Windows users. Um, but we've also had this nice feature, which you can um, almost any object in the game, in, in the engine, you can type dot help on it and it'll give you all this information right in the console. And uh, in some cases, it is literally just, we've written out nice instructions for you. And in other cases, it might be that it isn't there and it will just be, you know, here's a list of things that are here even though we haven't documented them. But they're all right at your fingertips now, which can be really, really helpful while developing. Um, anyway, that is just a rough idea of what we're doing with this. I'm pretty pleased with how this came out for as, you know, 
simple as it is, it's very customizable. It's going to solve like 20 problems that we have right now, and it looks really nice too. It feels nice to use, and that's a huge, huge win for us and for you too as a game developer. So um, I hope you play with this. I hope you like it, and you know your feedback is always welcome. If there's something you see that you want, need, let us know. All right, thank you very much.